long been elected as a heat source for power generation. With the increasing AC demand worldwide, relevant energy development is urgently required. One possible solution is to convert the waste heat into electricity to offset the electricity consumption of the AC system. An energy storage or distribution system will not be required since all the electricity generated can be used by the AC system. A major issue, however, is the inevitably low electricity conversion rate due to the ultra-low temperature of the heat source. In the past, such a low thermal efficiency would be regarded as not practical. With the increasing concern of the environmental issues such as the global warming effect, it may prove to be a useful approach considering the reduction of relevant environmental costs. In this study, four different common systems have been proposed for AC waste heat conversion. Power generation modules are based on first, organic Rankin cycle (ORC), second, organic flash cycle (OFC), third, Kalina cycle (KCS), and fourth, transcritical CO2 cycle (TCO2). Each of the above is integrated with a basic AC cycle to establish a combined system. The objective of this study are to gain understanding to first, the thermodynamic performance of different cycle on a conversion of AC rejected heat. Second, the possible cycle modification and integration strategies to enhance the performance by considering heat recovery. Third, the economic feasibility of the proposed system and their potential application. Here we can see the first uh, schematic diagram. From this first schematic diagram, we, we can see the uh, basic air conditioning system. So from this basic air conditioning system, we have four main parts, which is evaporator, compressor, condenser, and expansion part. So the first is evaporator. Evaporator function is to cool into air by absorbing its heat and turning a refrigerator into vapor. So, uh, the second is compressor. Compressor function is to increase the temperature and pressure of the refrigerant vapor. And the third is condenser. Condenser uh, function is to release the absorbed heat and the outside air and turn it back into liquid. And the fourth is expansion part. Expansion part function is to reduce the pressure of the refrigerant before it returns to the evaporator and completing the cycle. Now, looks at how this basic AC cycle can be combined with uh, other system. So here we can see the second schematic diagram. From this schematic diagram, so we can see the basic AC system combined with ORC or TCO2 module. After the AC condenser, the heat recovery unit captures with heat in the ORC this heat turns uh, into trans organic fluid into vapor and driving a turbine to generate electricity. In TCO2, the heat increases CO2 pressure for power generation. Then, a condenser cools the fluid and a pump or compressor uh, will recirculate it. So, uh, here we can see the third schematic diagram. Here we combine with OFC module. Similar to the first, a heat recovery unit captures with heat, uh, heating the OFC working fluid. The fluid is vaporized in boiler and driving a turbine for power. A flash chamber separates vapor from liquid, uh, which is then condensed back into liquid, and a uh, pump will be circulated. So the here we can see the fourth uh, schematic level. So here we combine with KCS module. Again, waste heat is captured and used to heat the KCS working fluid in a preheater and boiler. The vapor mixture is separated uh, and driving a turbine for power. Like the others, Vapor is condensed back into liquid and a pump will recirculate it. And this combined system integrates with heat recovery with power generation, offering efficiency improvement uh, alongside air conditioning. Now I will present about the performance calculation of the system. First and foremost, in order to develop thermodynamic models, the cycle is considered as a steady state and will neglect the friction also the heat losses to the surrounding. Okay, so for organic rankine cycle (ORC), we could find the thermal efficiency by subtracting the total value of work turbine with the work pump and B divided with the value of heat transfer internal heat exchange. So we are using this equation to calculate the work output needed with the heat transfer of the internal heat exchanger. Then we could uh, determine the efficiency of thermal efficiency for the organic rankine cycle by using the values that we obtain. Next, in order to find the value of coefficient of performance, first of all, we need to calculate the air vacuum process Q-Ever and compressor work W-Com. 
So this value will be used to evaluate the coefficient of performance which is given by this formula. Okay, so for the last calculation that we will obtain is the SAG efficiency. This formula that we use to obtain the value of the SAG useful and the input SAG of the system. So both value will be used to evaluate the efficiency of SAG and this table shows the final result of the efficiency and the performance of this organic rankine circuit. So Hi, my name is Harish and I will be talking about the exergy analysis based on all the finance and calculations that we have obtained before. This section discusses the exergy analysis of different systems used for air conditioning and heat recovery. Exergy loss, which represents wasted energy, is examined for each system's components. All findings are based on this graph over here. For basic AC system, without heat recovery, a significant portion of energy is lost in the condenser, making up almost half of the total loss. So, introducing a heat recovery module can reduce this loss. For ORC-based systems, in this system, the exergy loss in the IHX, or intermediate heat exchanger, is notably lower compared to the basic AC system. The overall performance is improved compared to the basic AC system. For KCS-based systems, similar to ORC, this system shows comparable total exergy loss. However, it tends to have higher loss in the condenser. The loss from the regenerator is negligible. For OFC and TCO2-based systems, this system exhibits higher exergy loss in the higher checks compared to ORC or KCS system, leading to lower overall performance. OFC also shows noticeable loss from exponential valves. Now, let's take a look at the temperature profiles based on this graph over here. For IHX temperature profiles, the temperature profiles of the IHX vary for among systems. ORC and KCS systems have a long flat section, while OFC and TCO2 systems show increasing temperature trends. ORC and KCS exhibit better temperature matching between hot and cold sites. For IHX inner temperatures, the inner temperature of IHX in the KCS systems is higher than in ORC systems, resulting in lower irreversibility. TCO2 systems have higher input temperatures compared to OFC systems, leading to less XG loss. For KCSB systems, comparable to ORC in terms of total exergy loss but may have advantages in terms of IHX inlet temperature and lower irreversibility. This could be preferable if makes minimizing energy base is critical, which is the aim of this research paper. Hi, I'm Izzat. So, my part is suggestion of system improvement uh, for air conditioning system. So, we know that in this unit, it's not improved for special valve and uh, evaporator system so we must to upgrade the system so special valve for special valve for the first one is electronic special valve which is uh, precisely control refrigerant flow by adjusting valve opening using electronic signal and this allow for dynamic adjustment based on uh, various factors such as temperature pressure and load condition resulting in increased efficiency and more precise temperature control. So this also allow for regulation of refrigerant flow which can improve uh, system performance and reduce energy consumption. So the second one is thermostatic special valve which is TXV with adjustable superheat that allows you to fine tune overheat level based on your specific system requirement. So this also allows you to optimize system performance and under varying load condition and ambient temperature increasing overall efficiency and comfort. So for evaporator, we can upgrade it by a uh, high efficiency coil, which is a uh, evaporator coil improve heat transfer and cooling performance. Look for coils with uh, advance in design and material optimized for efficient heat exchange. For the second one is coil coating. So some evaporator coil have anti corrosion coating and antimicrobial treatment to prevent mold and bacterial growth. So this coating can improve indoor air quality and extend the life of your coil.